So far for drone photography, I'm only been using the Mavic 2 Pro, which I found to be in a totally different league from any other Mavic model. But with the new Mavic Air 2, DJI seems to have put a lot of effort in photography. This drone has an impressive array of photography function bells and whistles. So I've decided to do a specific video about it. In the first part I will show you all the special photography mode. In the second part I will analyze the famous 48 megapixel photography mode. I've already done several videos about the specific aspect of the Mavic Air 2. You will find a link at the end of this video and in the description below. If you're interested in drone, I would suggest to subscribe to my channel. The panorama modes in the Mavic Air 2 are very similar to the one on the Mavic 2 line, the Pro and the Zoom. The drone will take several photos according to the type of panorama mode chosen and will automatically stitch them together in a high resolution JPEG image. Generally it does an excellent job, in my test only once it fails to stitch them properly for whatever reason. It is possible to choose to discard the original photos or to save them as RAW or as JPEG in order to put them together using other software packages, thus achieving an even higher resolution. The sphere mode takes 26 shots at 360 degrees around the position of the drone for a resolution of more than 32 megapixels. The results can be really spectacular, as of course a drone up in the sky gives a much better outcome than a ground-based point of view. Keep in mind that the sun will be in the shot practically all the time, so you might want to shoot close to sunset or sunrise, or with the sun partially covered by cloud, for best results. At first the result can be surprising, but after having a go for a few times, I started to get control of the outcome. Often it is worth shooting the same scene twice, with two different camera orientations for the first shot, and then choosing the best one. I really like this mode a lot, for a very unusual and special representation of a scene. Great fun! Other panorama modes include 180 degrees with 21 shots and 28 megapixel, also very interesting. Wide with 9 photos and vertical with 3 photos. Obviously, the resulting image can be manually cropped. Generally speaking, drone performs very poorly against the sun compared to regular cameras because of the very small sensor and the very simple lenses. The Mavic Air 2 has a half inch quad buyer sensor, a new one for the Mavic line. It is just a tiny bit bigger than the one in most Mavic models, but about 4 times smaller than the 1 inch sensor of the Mavic 2 Pro and 28 times smaller than the one in a full frame camera. Under these circumstances, the dynamic range of the Mavic Air 2 should be quite limited, but this drone has a few aces up its sleeves. First of all, it is possible to use automatic exposure bracketing shooting 5 photos at 0.7 interval to get a range of minus 1.3 EV to plus 1.3. I would certainly prefer a much wider range, like uh, minus 3 to plus 3 EV. After pressing on the AEB icon, we make sure that in general setting camera, we choose to save the images as RAW and we then choose 5 as the number of shots. I have to stress the importance of using RAW files, as JPEG files contain very little information in the shadows. When we press the shutter, 5 photos are taken in rapid succession. We can then use Lightroom, Photoshop, Photomatics or other softwares to merge the bracketed images to HDR. 
I have used Lightroom and after merging our image is a bit better and we can improve the raw image and get something decent. Although there is a lack of contrast and especially plenty of chromatic aberration in the flare from the sun. But that is due to the extremely simple construction of the lens, like in any drone cameras. But I've been really unfair with this one. It was straight into the sun during the day, at the time where photographers are supposed to be asleep. Let's see what can be achieved in a high dynamic range, but without the direct sun in the image. It is still a very difficult situation, as the sun is partially in the shot, and it is early afternoon in summer. Tough conditions. I have first taken this raw image manually composing to the right, in other words, making sure that the highlights in the sky are not overexposed. The rest of the image will be of course very dark, so we can see how much info we can recover from the shadows. After color grading in Lightroom, we can see that the result is good, certainly much better than the other Mavic models with the 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, although not quite as good as with the Mavic 2 Pro. A few seconds later I used automatic bracket exposure to capture 5 shots and then merge them to HDR using Lightroom. The result is similar, but there is maybe just a little bit more detail in the shadows. AEB does a decent job in increasing just a little bit the dynamic range compared to a single row photo. But it certainly would be more useful if we could dial in a much wider EV interval between the shots. I am very impressed with the performance of the Air 2 in high dynamic range situations. Let's see how the Air 2 performs at low light and at different ISO values. I will show you the normal photo and then a crop at the center. Please note that all those images are completely unedited. At ISO 200 the image is still perfect. There is plenty of detail and practically no noise at all. At ISO 400 we start to notice a tiny bit of noise in the sea and the slightest loss to detail in the trees and in the roof of the buildings. But we are pixel peeping, in real size the image is still very good. At ISO 800, noise and loss of detail are evident in the crop, but the image can still more or less be used. At ISO 1600, the image falls apart, but that was largely expected. The ISO performance is excellent for a drone, much better than any other Mavic drone except the 2 Pro. If we analyze the same image taken with the 2 Pro, we can see that up to ISO 800 the image is perfect. And ISO 1600 it is still usable and probably slightly better than the 800 ISO 1 taken with the Air 2. So at least a stop better for the Mavic 2 Pro. But that was largely expected with a great 1 inch assembled sensor. The Air 2 has also a quite mysterious smart mode, similar to computational technique used on smartphones. In smart photos, the camera analyzes the scene and acts in different ways according to the nature of the image. The first mode is scene recognition, which basically is surrendering the control of the camera. Just point and shoot and the photo will come out baked cooked and seasoned. I have never ever used this sort of modes and I strongly recommend not to use them. You should instead try to take control of your camera. Another mode is HDR photos. Apparently when a high dynamic range situation is detected, the camera captures seven bracket shots and combines them to increase the dynamic range. Let's see the result. In this very high dynamic range scene, I have taken one shot as a normal single 12 megapixel photo and immediately after another one as a smart photo. In the normal photo I expose for the highlights, knowing that the shadows would be very dark, which is the correct way. 
In a smart photo the highlights are just a touch more exposed, while the shadows are not as dark as in the normal photo. After color grading the images, I must admit that the smart photo has just a touch of extra detail in the shadows, so it can be really useful in these situations, not only for unexperienced users. We can also see very clearly that in a smart photo the distortion of the image has been corrected. Another mode is hyperlight. In low light conditions, the camera takes multiple photos and merge them in order to reduce the amount of noise. In this scene it was really, really dark. And this is what I could get in normal mode. It is indeed extremely dark and if I try to increase exposure or to recover the shadow, the amount of noise is insane. Immediately after I took this one in smart mode, taken at ISO 2340. If I try to increase exposure or lift the shadows, noise remains very low considering the context. And the shadows are still well preserved. This is very impressive. The problem with the image is softness, as it was taken at half a second and so the drifting of the drone caused motion blur. If it had been taken at a fifth of a second, it would have been perfect. So this hyperlapse mode looks extremely interesting. I will certainly investigate further and I would like to find a way to have some control on the shutter speed. A much hyped feature of the Air 2 is a photo mode called 48 megapixels. But how is it possible to achieve such a high resolution with such a tiny sensor? I can hear you asking. I'm not gonna go too much into technical details here, as it could be boring. Normally, the Bayer Quad sensor has 12 megapixels, like the traditional one in the Mavic Mini or Mavic 2 Zoom, but it also allows to divide each pixel in four smaller ones. So, in theory, it is true. This drone is somehow able to achieve 48 megapixels. But the problem is that each pixel is so small that it remains to be seen what sort of quality can be achieved. Also, considering that the R2 has not variable aperture, so it is shooting always wide open at 2.8. Very small pixels, in theory, should perform quite poorly at such a wide aperture. Also, I am not expecting at all anything good in low light, again because of the size of the pixels. In fact, DJI suggests not to use this method in high dynamic range situations. So let's try an image with plenty of architectural detail where I'm shooting down so that the sky is not in the frame in order to reduce the dynamic range. First of all, we notice that the 48 megapixel image is much darker, as it was expected. The smaller pixels cannot gather the same amount of light as the regular ones. After adjusting exposure in Lightroom, the one thing I notice is that the 48 megapixel image is warmer than the normal one, but otherwise no major difference. Let's go down to a deep crop in the central area. I still cannot really find any difference, even though it is a subject with plenty of detail in the roof of the church, the tiles and the trees. Again, in another crop farther to the right, I see absolutely no difference. Maybe by mistake I've taken twice a normal photo, but luckily in Lightroom I can check the resolution. And yes, the second one is indeed 48 megapixels. So let's try another subject. This time we have a wider view with trees in the foreground, a town in the background, and then the Mediterranean Sea farther away. Once again, the 48 megapixel image is much darker, so I adjust the exposure in Lightroom to help compare the two images. In full size, I see very little difference, but I actually find that there is a bit more detail and contrast on the normal photo, in the trees and on the roof in the foreground. Moving further to the town by the sea, I again notice more detail and sharpness on the 12 megapixel photo. Let's move to the crop of the town by the sea, and this time things are different. The normal image is a bit softer, while the 48 megapixels has just a bit extra sharpness in detail, but it is very close call. 
Let's compare it now with a real high definition image, taken with Her Majesty the Nikon D850. It has a resolution of 45.4 megapixels, not quite 48, but they are real pixels. Wow, we are just on another planet. This is what I call high resolution. So I'm frankly not impressed with the 48 megapixel mode in the R2. It might be marginally useful in a few situations, but otherwise it looks to me mostly like a marketing gimmicks. But please let me know in the comment below if you had more luck with it. So far, users serious about photography had to go for the Mavic 2 Pro in spite of the hefty price. The Mavic Air 2 has partly bridged the gap. For half the price, it is possible to buy a drone with impressive photography performance, even though professional photographer will still go for the Mavic 2 Pro. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Mavic Air 2 and drone action in general. Bye for now.